Joining me now is former U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill from Missouri, making her debut appearance on The Beat. Senator McCaskill, you obviously got into it with Mitch McConnell at times. Let's take a look. I am stunned that that is what Leader McConnell would call regular order. I ask unanimous consent. I'm going to object for tonight, but we'll discuss again tomorrow. The United States Senate is no longer the world's greatest deliberative body. And everybody needs to quit saying it until we recover from this period of polarization and the fear of the political consequences of tough votes. What have you learned about Senator McConnell? Mitch McConnell cares about one thing. That is being the majority leader of the Senate. He sought the power. He's been in the Senate for over three decades. What he always wanted to be was a senator. What he always wanted to be was the leader. And he will do anything, including, frankly, cede power to the executive branch, wreak havoc in the judicial branch, whatever it takes to hold on to power, which means every decision he makes is through a political prism for the Republican members of his caucus. The only times he's really stood up to Donald Trump is when he thought it was hurting his members, when he thought it was going to hurt their re-election chances. Uh, it wasn't because he had some fundamental ideological difference with the president. It's all politics. I, I mean, Ari, when I first came to the Senate, the first year I was in the Senate, and I was in the Senate 12 years, I voted on 306 amendments on the floor of the Senate. The last year I was in the Senate, I voted on fewer than 40. There is no longer an opportunity for senators to debate amendments and vote on amendments. Mitch McConnell, the only bill that Mitch McConnell can say that he has passed of note since he has been in charge really is the tax bill. That was written in his office. The lobbyists on K Street knew what was in the manager's package before the Democratic members of the Finance Committee knew. No one had input into that bill other than Mitch McConnell's tight circle that he said, go write the bill and then we'll drop it on the floor and we'll ram it through. And think about the consequences of that tax bill. That's the only thing he's gotten done. And he didn't do it the old fashioned way where you had committee hearings and debate and amendments. He did. He rammed through what he thought was important. Let me read something that, that you posted about this, because there is also this tradition of some sort of collegiality. Uh, but then the question of how many times do people want to get hit in the face politically? Uh, you posted you were sad that your dinner to say goodbye to senators that are leaving was not bipartisan. If we can't be together to even recognize those who are leaving, what hope is there for this place? Why didn't it happen? Two words, Mitch McConnell. It is popular, as you know, in Washington to talk about both sides, partisan breakdown. Why are you so convinced and what can you do to prove that this is explicitly McConnell and not just a back and forth? The first year we did not have this dinner together was because Mitch McConnell didn't want to. And so um, that he's the one who made the decision. Um, I think there have been efforts to try to pull the caucuses together. You keep, keep, keep in mind the way the Senate works. What Mitch has to do is he has to keep his guys together. Mm -hmm. So he wants to control the information they get. He wants to make sure they're getting his version so he can keep everybody in the corral. And, you know, Bob Corker and I used to talk back and forth. Wouldn't it be interesting for each caucus to listen to the other caucus <laughs> and what was being said, because Sounds I'm sure like you're, you're, you're like two constitutional founders. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really. And, and I think that he didn't really want there to be any opportunity for there to be this bipartisan collegiality that might lead to a crack in his caucus. I mean, he already has to deal with people who have strong independence, like Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski. But the vast majority of his caucus, he's been able to keep together um, even when they know the president, this president, is dead wrong. Uh, I mentioned in our, in our reporting here the history of Vietnam as a time when Democrats stepped up to Democrats. Foreign policy, uh, for many obvious reasons, including the risk of, of American lives, is one of those areas. Uh, you look at the, the Russian issue, which at times has been so partisan. Um, here was Mitch McConnell and criticism of him regarding uh, blocking action to deal with Russia as an adversary, separate from any outcome of the Mueller probe one way or the other, as you know. Take a look. 
Mitch McConnell wanted no part of having a bipartisan commitment that we would say, essentially, Russia is doing this, stop. The die had been cast here. This was all about the political play. It took over three weeks to get that statement worked out. It was dramatically watered down. And it was watered down in, on the insistence of Mitch McConnell? Yes. And nobody else? Yes. When you look at that as, as a U.S. Senator, someone who represents all constituents as an American, not as a Democrat, do you think that is, is to the shame of his historical legacy? I think he's going to have a lot of shame in his historical legacy. Ironically, he thinks what he did with the Merrick Garland nomination will make him be a glowing report in history because, because he did that, they elected a Republican president. That argument can be made, that there were a lot of evangelicals that did not like Donald Trump and his personal habits, but he gave them the list of who he was going to appoint to the Supreme Court, and they cared very much about that. So. He really takes credit um, and think of what he's taking credit for. He's taking credit for totally destroying the Constitution because the Constitution doesn't say that we nominate someone, the president nominates someone to the Supreme Court when it's not an election year. Um, these guys love to be strict constructionists, right, until they don't. And then they ignore the Constitution. So he's, um, he's, I think history will not be kind to Mitch McConnell. What he's done to the Senate, what he's done to the judiciary, and the power he has ceded to the executive mm. branch. Uh, Senator McCaskill, given your, your experience here and your forthrightness and your candor, it was such a, a great treat to have you as a guest on this very topic. I hope you'll come back on the beat. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Thank you, Senator. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.